night everybody, it's Bert from Soft Tubes. I'm here with another trailer from D3. I didn't check if that's actually what it's called, but we're just assuming at this point. Um, I keep wanting to say D23, I don't know why. Um, hmm, don't know why. But anyway, so this time it is The Mandalorian. Been waiting a long time for this trailer. Really excited to see this. Heard good things online, but had to try really hard to avoid it this morning. But we'll see how we go. Alrighty then, let's jump on in. Stormtroopers. Oh, that's right, this is after the Empire. Isn't it? I don't know why that was meant to be so shocking. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Fucking love IG-88! Hunting is a complicated profession. Ooh. Ooh. Hey! Don't I think it's called the Kryptonite Cup, man. Oh, Lego is so cool! Fuck yeah! Oh, I just noticed that the Disney Plus thing does the switch snap. I'm fighting with myself right now, to be honest, because I am super excited about that trailer. I also don't think it showed very much. I don't think it necessarily showed it, like, it didn't show us what specifically it's about. I don't think it had to. I wonder if they're gonna do another trailer, uh, since it's before November. Because that didn't give a story aside from it. it's a bounty hunter and there's some with the the empire doing bad shit before they went out and then maybe coming back. It's it's unclear whether any of the empire. I I feel like there might be remnants of the empire or something, but a lot of that stuff could also be before. But this am I did IG88 said it. I actually think I read that and I'm hang on. I think it's Taika Waititi that does the voice now. I think about it because I remember reading that. If it's Tiger with Tina doing the voice and I'm right, I, uh, I'm pretty sure that's what I read. I could be wrong though, but it's okay. Oh man. Oh man. This is the thing. I am not a massive Star Wars fan. Like, I like Star Wars. I enjoy watching Star Wars. But I'm not like, I know people that are way, way more into Star Wars than I am. Um... And I know, like, a lot of them do have mixed feelings, at the very least, about the Disney stuff. They, to, like, pretty much... I don't know anyone, necessarily, who's, like, super... Or talks about being super into Star Wars and thinks of themselves as being super into Star Wars. That particularly overly enjoys the Disney stuff so far. But I do know a lot that are like, ah, And then go... That was almost like a Chewbacca. I do know a lot that are like, ah, And then goes down to downright, um... Uh, hating it, essentially loathing uh, might be a better word. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not super in it, but there's stuff I really, really like from Star Wars. Uh, there's certain elements I like, e like even the old stuff. There's things I like and things I don't like, and then going all the way through, there's things I like, things I don't like. Um, there's just certain things that I gravitate towards that I don't necessarily like in other stuff. Like, I did not, oh, I did the other one, I think I sort of did. Um, I did not hate um, Last Jedi. I actually quite enjoyed Last Jedi. I'm one of those people. Uh, but I enjoyed it as a film, not necessarily a Star Wars film. I think there's two issues for me with it as a Star Wars film. The first being that it does go against what sort some things that are established, but I, which I don't think is necessarily bad. I don't think 
because I don't think it breaks any rules of Star Wars. I think it twists some or redefines some in some ways, but it doesn't break them as such. But I think the problem, which is the bigger problem, is it was no free reign because it was the middle film. It was stuck in the middle. So this, it was a film carrying on from Force Awakens, so I had to carry over stuff from that. And then, lead, and then it has to lead into the third film, which they would already have planned. So I think Ryan Johnson was in a really crappy position. Because watching that, I can see what he wanted to do. And he had really interesting and, I think, good ideas there of how to make you question how certain... Like, he doesn't necessarily want to... I don't think there was anything that necessarily want, wants to break anything in Star Wars lore. I think there, there's an intention to make you question why things are portrayed the way they are. So he wants to make you question, why is it a light side and a dark side? Why is it that the Force always gets talked about as being a benevolent Force when there's the Force is both dark and light? So it's technically both. But the Jedi always talk about the Force in a way that the Force will guide you to good things. But then there's always that backwards fear, like, oh, don't go down the dark side. Which means the Force doesn't have an opinion, it just does things. And so, it, it, there's a lot of this questioning going on in that film that I think is really interesting, but the problem is it's carrying on for something and it has to lead into something. So a lot of those questions don't really get to go anywhere, they sort of pop up suddenly, and then don't get to go anywhere. And you, there's like stuff at the end where I feel like his ending, if he got to choose it, and I could be wrong, I'm reading into it a lot, but I think his ending was Kylo suggests they break the cycle to Rey. He's like, let's break the entire cycle. And she agrees with him and they go off. And they reject both the uh, First Order and the Rebellion. Uh, oh no, the Resistance. That's what they're called. Um, I think that that was the original plan. But because Disney need that third film, the third film's pretty much set up. And it's a good versus evil film. Because Star Wars is very shades of well, not shades of gray it's very black and white um with occasionally it tries to inject shades of gray but it's a very difficult thing to do when they keep on pushing the idea of black and white i think that's what like i think george lucas did a lot too injecting the idea that maybe the black and white thing isn't perfect as it's implied at times in the original trilogy the thing the prequels were actually intended to show fully believing that your system is right is inherently flawed the jedi created more problems by doing that but i don't know if that ever got explored enough um and i think yeah so that's always sort of there but it's still very much good versus evil it's very tolkien-esque where there might be characters that aren't necessarily one or the other but ultimately it comes down to there are bad guys we must stop the bad guys kind of forgot where i was going with this <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so and I think Last Jedi was trying to do that and that if it got to go the way it wanted, it would have rejected that good and evil cycle entirely and had the two those two characters go off to be basically Grey Jedi and try to bring the Force by either like pretty much pr knocking them both down. Because the idea is that it, good and evil always creates a cycle. Even when one beats the other, the other will eventually come back and knock them down and then just repeats. So you need to break that cycle. The Mandalorian, for me here, from what I'm saying, is in a sense breaking that circle. <sighs> in terms of, it's not showing... It's, it's showing a dirtier underbelly, but we have a main character who's our protagonist, So, and I don't think they're going to make him a scumbag, or at least not a total scumbag. I'm expecting... I don't know if he's got a name, but the Mandalorian is going to... Um, Pedro Pascal is going to be basically a, a Han Solo in terms of um, uh, alignment, if you're going for a D&D &D approach. Uh, it's mostly coming to my head because I played it last night. Uh, but that's why I think they're going to go with it. And it would make sense for them to go that way, I feel. But it's, uh, yeah, it's not a bad idea and i think this sort of hopefully it's not i i get the worry it's weird people that i know who uh don't really like the disney stuff do really like rogue one 
I want to watch Rogue One again because in retrospect, I watched it twice. I fell asleep the first time. I was pretty tired that night though. I watched it again. I enjoyed it. But I do have a feeling it's not actually a good film. I think in a way it's an it's the opposite of Last Jedi. Um, it's Last Jedi is a well-made, well-structured film that doesn't really work as a Star Wars film. Rogue One is a badly structured, badly made film that works really well as a Star Wars film. Um, so I, ha I have a feeling it's kind of like that because there's a lot of stuff about it. Like, the only stuff that's memorable, really, is the final sequence. The final big fight stuff. Everything else is pretty much inconsequential. And that's an issue. And I'm a little worried the Mandalorian sort of taken after the tone of that. Which isn't necessarily bad though, because as long as it's not structurally the same, that'll be fine. I'm in. I'm really interested to know what the plot is going to be here, and how bounty hunters are going to play in. Like I'm really excited about the fact. I literally just realized then that this means IG88 survived the fall of the Empire, but I don't know what his role is. I wonder if they're going to go. For, I don't know for what it was in. I'm pretty sure it's in one of the games. And it might be put in the shows at some point or something. Of IG-88 is a bounty hunter, but only because he's trying to start a droid revolution. I don't know what it's from. I know I've seen it in stuff before. But that's essentially like his entire role is in everything. I think it was in Force Unleashed or something. Um, I have a feeling it was in Force Unleashed. That basically he was a revolutionary, but he was using the bounty hunter to kind of build that up. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if they followed that path with his character or if they go for something new. Uh, given that, yeah, this is a character I really, really like, even though he literally was nothing more than a fucking statue. Like, this is the weird thing with the bounty hunters. People, every person has a favorite bounty hunter from Star Wars, I feel. Like, anyone who likes Star Wars has a favorite bounty hunter. Um, like, I, every single one of them has people who love them. None of those bounty hunters do anything. Not one of them. They are literally like... People love Boba Fett and think Boba Fett is the coolest thing ever. Like, after the films. Boba Fett does nothing in those films get, but get knocked in a Sarlacc pit. He shows up, shoots a gun once, gets knocked in a Sarlacc pit. That's what his role is in those films. But for some reason, he's really cool. And it's because he looks cool. The, the bounty hunters look really cool, but nothing happens with any of them in the films. And that's a really weird thing to have. So, but I mean, they did get expanded on in the expanded universe, but I feel like like that stuff became after people thought they were cool. Like, no one was like, oh, okay, bounty hunters. And then they read a book and they're like, oh, wow, Boba Fett's actually a pretty cool badass. They were like, no, Boba Fett looks cool. And then they found a book about Boba Fett and went, yeah, he's cool. That's what I thought. That seems to be the way it works. Like, I like IG-88. He did fucking nothing in the movies. He only does stuff in expanded fucking universe crap. But, still like him. I like the design and I just think he looks cool and I think it's a really awesome idea of like this really lanky robot bounty hunter. He doesn't really have like a face or anything. Like, I just like that. Ah, it's weird. I'm really hoping this has a lot of really obscure Star Wars stuff, essentially. Like, this is a way to explore the Star Wars universe from a different angle. Better than Han Solo did. Uh, that's the other fear is it might be taken a little bit after the Han Solo film, but I don't think they're going to be that dumb now. But thankfully, it's also a series, so they have time. They don't have to be like, oh, this, well, I mean, we're also not playing with a main character that's a fucking established character, so they have to be like, this is how Mandalorian gets his gun, and this is how Mandalorian gets the name Mandalorian. Or fucking whatever, like that, like, oh, you're Mandalorian solo. And fucking here's his jacket, and those dice that meant nothing in the film like they don't have to do that thankfully so hopefully this works well the obi-wan show that's been announced with ewan mcgregor that might be a different matter although i don't think obi-wan in the original trilogy had anything they didn't already give him in the prequels so that's a better but they might try to do a lot there so we'll find out oh sorry hi oh i didn't wake up that long ago my brain for an hour but anyway, guys, I should probably stop there. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think of the Mandalorian down below. I'm really keen, but I have a feeling that my eagerness is like making me kind of blind to any of the issues that are here. 
but that's me. Um, but yeah, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, hit the dislike button. And if you like trailer reactions and all this and me talking about crap, um, I ramble on a lot. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to know the moment a video comes out of me talking and rambling on, you can hit the bell. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. No. Let me guess. You're like the center of your people's universe, right? Indeed. Well, I've got no leashes. Ah!